Muhammad Hijab gets completely humiliated by this very intelligent African Christian brother in Christ. And it gets even more interesting because he gets humiliated in front of his fangirls or <clears throat> I mean his fanboys that are other fellow Muslims. And this is going to be very, very interesting because he is less speechless. He doesn't know what to say. And he starts committing to Kia and lying for the purpose of furthering Islam. Now, one th way you guys can support this video is by smashing that like button. If you're not a Blackstone worshiper, please share this video with someone else so that they can also learn the truth as well. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and comment your opinions below. And I hope you guys enjoy. Them in his right. What Christians are talking, or even the New Testament, quite frankly, which doesn't explicitly talk about three co-equal, co-eternal uh, persons of the Trinity, and what we're finding from uh, Christians today. So we're saying that the natural continuation of the previous prophets and what they came with was clearly Islam because Islam is upholding what Abraham spoke about, what Moses spoke about, what Jesus spoke about and Muhammad he came as a final prophet and messenger only to announce that there's only one God worthy of worship. That's the, that is the crux of the religion of Islam. So I feel like the inconsistency if anything is, is belongs with the Christian because the Christian here has to believe in the Trinity which has no basis in the, in the Old Testament or in uh, Abraham's words and his teachings on Noah, or all of these prophets of the past. That's our position. Okay. Can you, can you, huh? can you ask your question? No, I'm not talking to you. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm having a dialogue. It's a very calm dialogue. So again, I think my, my first claim is, I mean, you saying that uh, Islam does uh, embrace the previous um, uh, prophets, that you do believe in them, it's, a, it's just a claim. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empty claim. Because when you say you believe in them, why you, will you believe in them? It's what they've said. They say they are prophets because what they have spoken on behalf of God, isn't it? So what they've spoken for God, that's what you have to believe. But if that message they spoke, and then with the message that Muhammad is bringing, contradict, that's where tension is. And you have to believe what Muhammad said because of the claim within the Quran. And you're trying to correct the Bible, which is the previous scripture we came. And when we go into the scriptures of uh, the previous scriptures, in a lot, in, 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 in the teaching, completely different. Like you said, there's only one God. But do you know God within the Old Testament associated himself with his Redeemer has been one? Does Muhammad teach the same message? He doesn't. He says Allah is one. He cannot take partner. But when we have a clear statement within the Old Testament and the prophet who came before Muhammad asserting this and making clear statement, we have to now identify who is lying. This prophet, look, if you have two witnesses already or three, it's already enough to see the variety of the message against one who came after, many centuries after, when the message, even what the prophesies came to pass, because that's what we see, the Old Testament, the, test, the, the prophet, what the prophesies, everything the prophesies came to pass. When we said, uh, the one shall be uh, born, shall be called the son of God, whatever, these are prophecies, and this prophecy came to pass. And you've got someone coming 600 years after claiming God has not son. So it's a problem. My problem is, again, I will say, in character and principle, Allah cannot be Yahweh who gave us the Ten Commandments. Allah does not enter creation, which is mean when we read this previous scripture, God enters creation. Mount Sinai, he wrote the Ten Commandments himself and gave it to Moses. This is what we've got before even Muhammad came. And when you have this language, this teaching, and when you say Allah does not enter creation, there is a incompatibility in terms. But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna address about the oneness of God. But let's, let's, let me just. Let me give one. Can, let, I, can I just come back? Okay, to come, go. I, I wanna give a reference now. You've spoken a lot, but you haven't said no, very no. little. You've spoken a lot, but you have said very little because in that time you haven't shown me where there's a contradiction between. The Old Testament uh, proclamations of the, the prophets of old and Muhammad's proclamation. I'm going to show you. So what, what I'm saying is that what's crystal clear uh, in the Old Testament is that 
uh, as, as I mentioned in chapter, chapter 6 verse 4 of uh, you know, Deuteronomy you know, Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad which is that Hear O Israel, uh, your, Lord, your Lord, our Lord is one Lord that same language is used in, in the Quran Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, 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 the same thing one and only I'm gonna now what I'm saying to you. is that it seems to me to be the case even if you look at the Old Testament yeah, and look at what Abraham was talking about if you look at what Moses was talking about he was telling his people to believe in one God worthy of worship without any associates. Don't make any graven images of me. It's one of the, the commandments uh, in, in the Old Testament. So we have the, the commandment to worship only one God. We have the commandment not to make any graven images of God uh, and so on. These commandments are up, up, upheld only by the Muslims. Okay. Christians now, if you go to a church, there's graven images everywhere. You know, if, 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 you took, if you go to the, uh, the proclamations of the creeds that have been put forward, like the Nicene Creed, the Constantinople Creed and the Child Chalcedon Creed and all these creeds, all of them are talking about, except for Nicaea, Master 381, they're all talking about three co equal co, uh, co eternal uh, persons of the Trinity. Now, what I'm saying is that if we're talking about consistency, I have only one question for you. Yes? The Old Testament is making it very clear there's only one God worthy of worship. I'm That's gonna, what the Old Testament I'm going to ask okay. you now. Now, I'm saying that Muhammad and Islam also says there's only one God worthy of worship. The Christians today, Protestants and Catholics, they say that there's one God, but is identified as three persons of the Trinity, which are co-equal and co-eternal. Uh, We're saying, from whence did you get such formulation? This formulation of three co-equal, co-eternal uh, persons of the Trinity was developed historically it was not first there, you can see a clear historical development. That's why in the 325, in the Council of Nicaea, the Holy Spirit was not co-equal and co-eternal. He was there as a Lord, but not as a God that's co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Only in 381, he became co-equal and co-eternal after the Cappadocian Fathers deemed him as such. Uh, and there was great debate about what the placement of the Holy Spirit is going to be. What I'm saying is that you can even see, and I'll add to this, uh, church fathers like Justin Martyr, yeah, Justin Martyr, the church father, yeah. he's talking to the pagans of his time and he's saying to them, look, just like you have Jupiter, you believe in Jupiter, we also believe, uh, is the son of God, you, uh, is the son, we also believe in the son. So he's trying to, you can see there's compromise, theological compromise being done by the early church father. There's a development that ensues as a result of it and then there's a crystallization of a new religion which Theodosius II puts forward as the, the religion everyone must believe in. That development is not there in Islam. Islam tells us to go back to the original message of Abraham and Moses and Jesus. So you have to explain to us how if Christianity is true and the Protestant or Catholic formulations of it or even Eastern Orthodox formulations of it are true, why is it that we can see a clear historical development of what constitutes God for, for you guys? And how can you how can you square this triangle here? Right. Well, you've got the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, co equal, co uh, eternal, and that uh, the Old Testament doesn't mention anything uh, like this. Even the New Testament doesn't mention anything like yeah, this. Yeah, okay. But um, I, um, I, I'll go back to the original. I, I even, I'm not even going to go too into uh, the reflection of uh, church fathers while they went okay. through the process to come to the conclusion. Because you see, my, my claim is I'm putting on trial Muhammad and the prophet, the previous prophet. So basically what they said and what Muhammad said. According to the Muhammad, to the saying, God cannot have, can have uh, uh, anyone next to him. So he cannot share his glory, isn't it? So what, what, what I'm trying to do is, is just to quote what the prophet before Muhammad, what they have said. Then we compare, because we can only compare within what they said. Here we have Isaiah 44. Within Isaiah, what does Isaiah, the prophet of God, understand about the oneness of God, God being one? So I'm going to read a biblical verse, what does Isaiah say? Isaiah 44, what does it say? Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, who is it? Our Lord, our God, yeah? And thus says the Lord, King of Israel, and his redeemer yeah as far as we know jesus is the redeemer of the souls of men what does it say the lord of hosts i am the first and i am the last beside me there is no god 
in this context, when we bring Jesus, when God says is one, they are one in unity with his son. And this is the understanding of the previous prophet before Muhammad. And this is not the only verse. I'm going to give you another verse. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. So I'm going to give you another verse. What does he say? Another verse in Psalm 2. I've got Psalm 2, yeah? Psalm 2. Again, what does he say? God is speaking before even Jesus came into the world. What does he say? What do nations rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The king of the earth set themselves. And the ruler take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break the bond in pieces. This is the intention of man trying to separate God and his anointed, his son. And what does he say? Then he says, we who sit in heaven, who sit, who sit in heaven, who sit in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his right. God will be so angry for people to try to separate him and his anointed. So when we talk about God is one, is it talking about God the creator in his ruling? He is the father and his son who is the redeemer who came to redeem us, which is, I'm not talking to you, please. He's a, he's a, he's a giant in Dawa, so you don't have to speak on his behalf. No, we're having a very peaceful conversation. I've been very respectful. So I'm just making my point. So my point I'm saying, when we're reading this, uh, the belief of the previous prophet, with the teaching of Muhammad. When he says in the Quran, I think, I don't know, uh, 9 uh, verse 30, when he says Allah cannot have a son because he does not have a girlfriend. And when we have this language, when you go, oh, look, look, when we go in the proverb, now I'm going to read proverb now. He cannot have a son. Is that, is that, is that, am I making a false no, no, claim? No, no, no. So, okay. So if I go, because he doesn't have a girlfriend, no, no, that's not Allah does has to have a girlfriend. So I'm just trying to represent the understanding of the previous prophet. Okay. They understand, they understood. Okay. Can, can, God, can I, can I, I'm going to finish. Okay. So God in his unity, when they say God is one, Oh, here, Israel, your Lord, your God is one. In that unity, there is God the Father, and there is also the Son within that unity. So that's the claim I'm making, which is the teaching of Islam contradict. So I'm going to give you the last, uh, again, another uh, verse. I'm just going to finish. Okay, go ahead. You see? I know it is No, 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 no. Look, I'm just trying to lay what's the, yeah, the teaching yeah, yeah, and the belief of, of the prophets, uh, the previous prophet, yeah. and what Muhammad taught. That's yeah. my, 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 my content. That's why I reject Muhammad to not be a true prophet. Okay, so if I go to another verse, don't go another verse. Can this be the last one? Yeah, it's the last one. Yeah. yeah? And then, and then so look, what does he say? Yeah, yeah. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? This is Proverb 30, verse 4. You can go and research. I like giving reference. I want you to give knowledge for yourself to understand. I'm not quoting my word what the prophet taught. It's up to you. You can still accept it or reject it. Who has extended into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has borne the water in a garment? Who has established all the end of the earth? What is his name and what his son's name? So from all the Old Testament, there is a God and his son. So it's well, well, well stated, established. So that's my problem. I'm oh, saying fine, fine. Let, when, let, when let, we come yeah. to Muhammad, then he does not okay. say, he does not agree. God has his divine son. So that's right, my problem. Well, so let's deal with, yeah. I actually asked you a question, but you didn't. Oh, which one? Sorry, uh, if no, I no, missed no, the answer. I will, I will bring it back. Okay. Because the initial claim that you made was that there was no consistency between the Old Testament prophets yeah. and what the Prophet Muhammad came with. Yeah. Then I told you that from our perspective, the, the inconsistency actually lies with the okay so this is before i even get into this guys this is what muhammad loves to do what he'll love to do is he'll love to say oh you didn't answer my claim but i'll get into that last let me just review what you're saying he's lying he just says that to substantiate his claim to add more layers to his claim so that he can run away from what you're actually asking him 
and then he can make you look bad in the debate when he actually did answer all of the questions that Muhammad had. He's such a liar. Um, but another thing I did want to mention is because I don't know if you guys noticed, but in this video, I was getting attacked by the devil. Satan did not want me to upload this video, guys, because every single time my video kept pausing, pausing, the app kept shutting off, shutting off, shutting off. But I'm getting this video out there because I know a lot of souls are going to be saved watching this video, guys. But he made a very great claims, his brother in Christ, knowing Muhammad's hijabs, you know, uh, satanic tactics where he tries to manipulate you, where he tries to assert his authority, where he tries to bully you, and when he tries to gaslight you. I think he handled this situation very, very well because, you know, the reality is, is that Islam is false and that there is no way that you could substantiate that Muhammad is even a prophet. There's no evidence biblically from the Torah. There's no evidence that Muhammad was a prophet historically whatsoever. He was just some random dude in Saudi Arabia who claimed I'm a prophet. Come follow me and what I have to say. The books before the Quran don't agree with the Quran and they don't align with one another. That's why Muslims have to lie and commit taqiyya and are forced to say the books that came before the Quran have been corrupted. And that's far from the truth. From a historical perspective, we know this unbiasedly, undoubtedly, that the Bible and the Torah, we have the same one that we did thousands of years ago. So Muslims must lie to themselves and say that the books before have been corrupted because they know they contradict the Quran. So this is the dilemma that Muslims frequently run into. I fail to run into a Muslim that actually accepts the fact that the books before the Quran is actually true, unfortunately, because they have to be intellectually dishonest in order to further the purpose of Islam. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Please go ahead and smash that like button. Please share so that more people can hear the truth. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you guys want to go ahead and support my channel, here's a few ways that you guys can support my channel. You can become a member at our website just in case I get banned. And also for only $9.99 a month, you can get early content without ads plus exclusive banned content. And you can go ahead and donate on our PayPal or you can go ahead and buy MAPA merch for Christ. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope that you guys have a very blessed weekend. God bless you guys.